Hello, insiders. Uh, today, we got a very special guest interview. We have Vishal from the live team. Vishal leads the product team across all of YouTube Live. So yes, uh, we are here to talk about uh, YouTube Live today. I know Vishal and the live team have been uh, very busy lately. Uh, Vishal, we have gotten a lot of requests in the past from Career Insider channel audience for them wanting to understand live area better. So you know, hopefully, this will be the way to do that. Um, we will talk about what's the mission for the live team, the impact of COVID-19 on live, um, the things live team has been working on and, and the things that, you know, what you what the live team is thinking of doing next. And this also, I guess, gives us an opportunity, Vishal, to get feedback from the audience, especially the ones who use uh, live product a lot. Um, so let's zoom out uh, a little bit first. What's actually the live team's mission? Thanks, Imanshu. Uh, so live is a really unique format. Uh, especially in sort of the environment that we are in today, where it's really challenging to have in-person physical meetings. Uh, we feel like live offers a way for people to stay connected. So my team's mission is really to uh, take the vid video experience that we have on YouTube and augment it into one that really brings in that, uh, the, that aspect of live. Uh, we, we are often fond of saying that our mission is to create uh, a shared interactive community. And in these uh, unprecedented times with COVID-19, how is uh, how is how is live uh, coming across? How is uh, how is the product is being used? What are you hearing from the creators? So I, I'll give you like some of my favorite examples that I've seen in live uh, over the past few months. Um, you know, uh, one area that I'll start talking about, which I think is probably very top of mind for everybody right now, is the value that we think life provides by helping public officials inform and educate their constituents. Another uh, sort of like thing that we're seeing that we're actually very proud of is like this explosion of learning that we're seeing on the platform. Uh, so there are examples like creators like Khan Academy using live streaming to run classes or to run uh, like uh, AMAs or ask me anything. We've seen, uh, you know, like uh, at least for me personally, in this time, I'm cooking a lot more at home. I'm trying to work out at home. And we're seeing this uh, cooking classes and exercise classes as people try to learn new skills, which is another area that we're particularly proud of. Uh, and then finally, I think, uh, you know, not to discount it at all, we think it's extremely important is sort of the entertainment value. We think it's kind of important in this time for people to have some semblance of normalcy and be able to indulge in something that they might enjoy. I know Vishal working with your team that you know you guys have been working really really hard, uh, and I thought it would be nice for our audience to also know like what you guys have been up to in the last um, last twelve months. What what features uh, have you have have you guys shipped or or in the on the process of shipping? So yeah, the live team has actually really been uh, working hard on getting new features to creators. Uh, the first feature that comes to mind for me is our live control room. Uh, so the live control room is essentially uh, the equivalent of studio for live creators. It's a complete rewrite of our desktop uh, live creation tool set. Uh, and it's where creators go if they want to start live streaming. Uh, so uh, as the live control room has many great features for creators. Uh, probably the uh, first thing that I'll start is like live control room allows us to give more feedback to creators about how their stream is doing. So the quality of the ingestion, or how many people are watching, or how many chat messages are coming through. And then we've done this in a way that the surface is extensible. And over time, we can add additional analytics that we want uh, creators to see. Uh, another really exciting innovation for me is uh, the ability to incorporate uh, new features that we're working on, like highlights. Uh, so highlights is a feature that allows a creator to make highlights of their live streams while they're actually live streaming. Uh, and then highlights could be anywhere from 30 seconds to two hours in length. And they're saved as like a separate standalone video that the creator can then share with their community. And then finally, like, you know, the last change, which is probably not so obvious to creators, frankly, if we've done our job right, we hope creators won't even realize this. Uh, but we have two very core journeys to live streaming that we think about. Uh, one is the ability to stream now or the ability to go live immediately. And then the other one is the ability to schedule a stream for later, which we've called events. Um, interestingly, these features were actually built on different tech stacks. 
And while that is obviously not something that creators need to be worried about, what that meant was every time we wanted to add a feature, we had to have it in two places. And it made it a lot harder for us to uh, respond to some of the feedback that we were getting from creators. So what I'm really excited about is one of the things that we did is that we've actually merged our uh, tech stacks so that in the future, we can actually roll out features much more quickly. And then another area that I'll talk about is chat safety. So I talked a lot about how live is about watching together with the community, right? Uh, which, which we're really proud of. But at the same time, sometimes when uh, we've seen folks will join the community and they may be hateful or demeaning. So uh, a lot of our efforts over the last few months have gone into tightening up our spam protections to make sure that chat is a safe environment for everybody to participate in. Um, and then finally, one of the uh, areas that we are working on very hard is search and discovery. Uh, so we want to make it easier for viewers to actually find the content that they are interested in. We recently rolled out uh, the live chip in the Explore tab on mobile to make it easier to find uh, for viewers to find live streams that they're interested in. Uh, we also changed the way live streams show up in search so that when a viewer is actually searching for like a creator, we highlight uh, live streams or premieres that might be coming up. You know, me personally, having worked on studio migration uh, from classic to, to studio, I can totally relate the rewrite of the LCR that you're talking about. I think these are, I'm not quite sure how old the previous version was, but I know that in studio, there were a lot of stuff that was written like over a decade ago. So the tech stack was very brittle. Uh, so I guess, you know, every decade or so, we have to take the plunge of, uh, you know, rewriting stuff to make it scalable faster, um, and it's great that it's actually coming towards its end. So that's a good segue into the, the next thing, which is um, I, I still see that there are some live features which, which have not been fully natively built in Studio, and there are still links to Classic that opens up a new tab. So what's your, what's your guys' plan on that? Himanshu, I think you've caught us with our hands in the cookie jar. Let me, let me tell you a little story about why that's happening and how we're going to address that. Uh, so we actually first started rolling out live control room at the beginning of the year. Uh, and we got feedback from the creator community. And what we found is that the flow that we had created was confusing creators. Some creators were unintentionally resetting their stream keys. Uh, some of them could not go live because they, uh, you know, like they made a change where uh, we made a change where even though you were sending us bits from your encoder, you had to come to the live control room and hit a go live button. And this was new to creators, and they did not realize they had to do this. So ultimately, this was a very frustrating experience for some of our creators. And so we feel that there is a lot of long-term value that we're creating with the live control room, uh, with features like highlights, with analytics, and from unifying the tech stack. So we decided to keep the live control room, but we wanted to fix the feedback. So uh, while we were working on those fixes, we introduced links back to the classic product so that creators could go back and continue to use the stream now interface that they had become used to. Um, we're now actually coming to the point that we are gearing up to launch the new live control room to all of our users, uh, including stream now users. Uh, and our goal actually here is to make sure that all these users that are using the classic uh, product uh, have like a smooth uh, on-ramp into the new live control room. We want their experience to be at least as smooth as they felt as it was in classic, if not better. Yeah, I can I can totally imagine how tricky the situation is. But I guess this is the kind of color that you know our viewers and, and creators can hear from you and understand, you know, how we are thinking about this and, and hopefully empathize with the whole situation. But I think ultimately uh, what I'm hearing is everything uh, will be built natively in studio. Um, so so which is great. Well, let's switch to uh, you know this future a little bit, both short term and long term. So can you put a little bit light on what are the things that uh, you folks are uh, you know working in the short term that need you know immediate attention, and also uh, areas that you know long term you folks are thinking on investing. So uh, you know in first I just want to say like we've seen an explosion of creation happening on our platform because of the current environment where a lot of uh, countries have been very adversely impacted by the health crisis. 
Um, so we've actually taken that very seriously. We think this is a responsibility that we have to make sure that we are make, meeting these creators at this time and giving them the tools they need. Some of the areas that we're focused on are discovery and safety. Uh, so let me start by a little bit about discovery. Uh, one of our goals is to really help streamers get started on YouTube. So we want to make sure that when they actually come to studio or to the live control room, they have a very smooth on-ramp and the ability to go live with minimal friction. Um, then the other challenge that we have is making sure that as these creators are getting started, we help connect them with viewers that might be interested in their content. Another area that we're actually uh, looking at very seriously is what we call creator-led discovery. Uh, this is where creators introduce other creators to their community and recommend them. So uh, we've seen many examples of features like this in the live ecosystem, and we think that there is an opportunity for us to actually support these upcoming creators by adding some of these features uh, to our to our platform as well. And then finally, uh, our, our real goal, frankly, is that we want YouTube to be the preferred destination for a viewer when they want to watch a live stream. And that means creating a really exciting and compelling user experience. Uh, so you've, we've, uh, we're in the process of rolling out features like pin chat and polls that will make the, uh, the live experience much more fun to watch and much more engaging. Uh, and then safety remains like one of our top concerns. And wherever possible, our first step is to try to do this automatically. So we don't want our creators to hire armies of moderators. But we also think there is a very important role for the community and moderators. And so we're thinking about how we balance both of those and make uh, live an environment that's safe for everybody. So I, I want to make a comment for the audience. If you have any feedback or comments, please add. Uh, we literally uh, read every single comment of yours. So this is uh, a time for you to make your voice heard. So with that, um, do you have any advice for, you know, folks who are, you know, upcoming live streamers and they're trying to make it big? A few tips that I can give uh, uh, upcoming live streamers, right? Uh, when you go live, uh, pay attention to things like your title and description. These are actually the pieces of metadata that we use to try to understand what the stream is about. The other tip I can give creators is actually having an upcoming state can actually help you in terms of finding an audience. Because a lot of times, if you just start streaming immediately, it's actually hard to understand what the content is and who it might appeal to. But probably the most important tip that I have for creators is to just have fun with it. Like let your personality shine and take advantage of this ability to connect with viewers Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, uh, Vishal. And thank you again for your time on the Career Insider channel. Uh, please add your comments to the video uh, on what do you think, uh, you know, the, the live, should, live team should also invest in. Uh, and also, like, if you had a magic wand and, and you, you know, you, you can ask live team to do anything, uh, what would that be? Um, so thank you and uh, keep it real. Thanks again, Vishal, for your time.